Hi, it's me again, Bill. Not bad. But it depends on what you're used to. This is the equivalent of two buck chuck. It's a, I think it's the same thing, but it's a, it comes in a different box. Two buck chuck only comes in a bottle. Anyway, what were we talking about? Um, I mentioned the adult industry. Um, you may think that um, the adult industry is kind of icky at times, but you know it really isn't. Uh, I have uh, known many, many uh, people in the adult industry, uh, both male and female, um, and uh, you know this, they're in a business, and this is something that they're comfortable with. Um, uh, one good friend of mine is Nina Hartley. Uh, she actually uh, comes out of, uh, I believe, Oakland or Marin up in that area. Um, at one time I ran a place called the Oakland Edgewater. Um, you know, many of you may not have ever heard of it, but it, it's quite famous. I was the general manager of the Edgewater in uh, probably the early 90s. Uh, it is a uh, 120 room adult motel um, and it is famous I kid you not um, and anyone who is ever part of the the industry when I say the industry the adult industry does something with the uh, Edgewater including Penthouse Playboy Hustler uh, the Mitchell Brothers which we talked about earlier um, it goes on and on and on uh, Nina Hartley's husband, the little Dutchman as I refer to him, at one time worked for me. He was my gardener. Um, and uh, you know, they, would, they would come to parties that we would host at the Edgewater. You can guess what the parties were. Um, and uh, they were, it was pretty wild. Um, I was brought into the Edgewater, uh, one, because I was a realtor and understood how a commercial building should operate. Two, I was uh, comfortable with the the adult industry, three, I was a photographer, four, I was a publisher, and five, I was known to throw parties uh, and got very, very well known at throwing these parties. And I was contacted by the owner, her name is Ying Wong, um, and uh, she offered me uh, basically what I was making if I stayed home and did whatever I was doing at home with my magazines. I think my income at the time was around 80k a year. plus. Uh, whatever I could generate after that. And, and when I say generate, I eventually took over the bar. I had the uh, soda machines outside. I had part of the um, um, a little retail store within the, the hotel. Um, so I was generating income from that. Um, one day we had a, a, a little problem there with somebody who walked in and uh, he didn't speak English. He only spoke Chinese. And I came up and talked to him in a very, you know, at first casual, friendly way, and I told him, I said, you know, if you're going to work here, you're going to have to learn how to speak English. And he informed me that Mrs. Wong hired me. Nobody can tell me what to do. I said, I'll tell you what to do. You are fired. And when I said that, he took and threw a book at me. He grabbed a phone book. And um, then he got dealt with um, in a unpleasant way. He was thrown through a window by someone else. I didn't do it. But uh, the Oakland police came, and you know the poor guy, the little Chinese guy, was laying out. He was pretty well cut up from hitting, going through the plate glass window in the front of the hotel. And then the uh, cop casually came over to me, and he says, "Are you going to file charges against him for the throwing the book at you?" I said, "He's bleeding. I'm getting ready to call an ambulance." <laughs> he said, "Well, he assaulted you. He threw a book at you. And over here, this your your friend here protected you." I said, he, "I didn't need protection." I said, "No. What do you mean? I'm not going to have the guy arrested." I said, "You know, he threw." threw a phone book at me, big deal. He said, well, it's an assault. Do you want him arrested? I said, no, I don't think I want him arrested. <laughs> I felt bad about the guy. Um, you know, and plus I realized that the next morning I was going to be replacing an eight foot by eight foot plate glass window. Anyway, uh, running the Edgewater, it was fun. I remember one party we had. Uh, out by the pool, there were probably 100 plus uh, Harleys, all Hell's Angels. And uh, they were invited down, and they asked me where they could park their bikes because they were afraid that people were going to go and you know touch their bikes and 
uh, maybe steel stuff. And I said, well, why don't you park them around the pool? So if you can uh, picture uh, oh, 100 plus uh, motorcycles parked around a huge swimming pool and all the uh, Hells Angels and porn stars and everything floating around there, it was a wild weekend. And uh, everyone seemed to have a good time. Police, oh, all over the place. You know, they're taking pictures from the balcony and everything else. But, uh, you know, when I talked to them, um, I said, hey, there's no problems here. There's no drugs here, no weapons here. Um, I said, you know, everyone's having a good time. Just let them have a good time. I said, I'm, I'm watching it. And which, you know, uh, come Sunday evening, you know, the parties all broke up. Everyone home, went home and uh, cleaned up after that. And we had a good weekend. You know, when I was running the hedge water, um, one of the housekeepers called me. She said, uh, Bill, could you come to room 65? I said, well, what's, what's going on? She goes, well, uh, there's somebody in the shower. I said, I don't really want to go down and see somebody in the shower. He's not moving. Oh, God, not now. <laughs> so first thing I did was before walking down there, I called 911. And I was asked by the 911 operator what they're responding to. I said, housekeeper just told me that there is somebody not responding in, in the shower. I said, I don't know what it is. I'm going out there myself. So I walked out there, and um, um, I forget what her name was, a uh, little Chinese woman. Uh, I, I said, well, let's go and see what's going on. So I opened the door, opened the bathroom door. Oh, God, you know, somebody OD'd in the bathroom. And uh, um, I was left to clean it up. And then the police came and the ambulance came, and it was a mess. Um, but, you know, my time at being at that hotel, yes, I had one person die of a drug overdose. Mind you, I've never done drugs in my life. I never will do drugs in my life. Um, but, you know, when you're in the... Uh, in motels, hotels, you find people doing drugs all, all the time. Um, but the Edgewater was fun. We had a built-in nightclub. We had uh, bands come in and play music, and they were making uh, uh, movies in there. The Mitchell Brothers were making movies. Playboy came down. They they filmed everyone in there uh, having a good time. You know, it was featured on Playboy Channel. It was it was a good time. And uh, you know the uh, the Wongs. When I parted, uh, they weren't sure what they were going to do. Actually, shortly after I parted. Uh, they sent me a, a, a note asking me if I'd like to join them in, I believe it was Ch Shanghai. They wanted me to uh, take over a hotel in Shanghai and do what I did with the Edgewater. And I, I told Yang, I said, I'm sorry, I don't want to go to Shanghai. I don't like Chinese food and I don't speak the language. She also wanted me to leave my wife at home. Yang had a thing for me. Um, and I, I, I just couldn't do that. That wasn't my thing. I was happy and uh, so I I chose to stay here in America. Um, the Edgewater now is closed. Um, it's uh, slowly being parted off and sold for various commercial projects around the Oakland airport. But in its heyday, the Edgewater was the place to be. Uh, there was nothing bigger than the Edgewater ever, nor will there ever be. Um, there were movies made of it, Playboy, Penthouse, Hustler, Gallery, you name it, they all made films there. Um, and uh, it was something you'd had to see. Um, once again, I want to thank you, and I do have more to share with you. Bye-bye now.